Shalom, beloved. A word. As I was going throughout my day and just watching the different events of life and time, I realized that sometimes we need to count our blessings, truly count our blessings. When we look around at the mercy of the Lord and the goodness that he has done for us, when we count our blessings, it'll change our attitudes. As we go into this Sabbath, my thoughts are on counting my blessings, on praising the Lord for all he's done and all he is going to do. Counting our blessings without thought most of us have had something to eat, somewhere to sleep, clothes to wear, and, and choice of clothes, choice of food. Money in our pockets, enough to get us through the day. Our children are not dying before our eyes because the blessing that is upon us, he blesses our children even those that are wayward, the blessing of the Lord, counting our blessings, beloved, is a powerful thing. It can change depression in the joy when we count our blessing. When we recognize how much the Lord has done and is doing for us, not according to the world, which is a consumer, greed, spirit, but according to the truth of all the goodness of the Lord. I want to start out, first of all, in Psalm 41, blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. To be able to help a poor person is a blessing in and of itself because we have something to give instead of moving into straight need all the time. It is truly blessed, more blessed to give than to receive, not only because the spirit of the most high is moving in us, beloved, but because there's a blessing in the ability to give as opposed to that need to receive because we don't have and we lack. There is a blessing in it, beloved. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies, beloved. When we move according to the spirit of the Most High and not according to the spirit of the world, Right now, there are those who attempt to make laws telling people not to give water, not to give food. But we know that the Lord said, blessed is he, he, she, that considereth the poor. The Lord himself would deliver them in time of trouble. Yes, beloved, yes. Those are those blessings when we're counting them. When we look at Verse three, the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou will make all his bed in sickness. Yes, thou will not deliver him unto his enemies. Why? Because the Lord will be merciful because you have shown mercy. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul for I have sinned against thee. Yes, many of us, beloved, even in the midst of committing sins that we know we need not hide them, the Lord has still been merciful and blessed us, beloved. Yes, yes, he's in the midst of our wrong. He's still been merciful. And understand 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yes, beloved. 
The Lord wants good for his children. And many of us, even in the midst of doing wrong, he is still blessing us. These are days and times we need to count our blessings. When we look at our problems, they become minuscule. When we see the blessings, first of all, there's some of us have passed that we don't even know how we got this far. We, we don't know how we made it. It was a blessing that we woke up this morning, beloved. It's a blessing that we're going to see the close of this day in the beginning of the Sabbath because many among us have been called home. They will not see another day. And it isn't based on age. Whom is called? When we look at the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, we are in the midst of a blessing, beloved. If we use our patience, okay? Book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, and it shall come to pass. When all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, we've had that blessing and we've had that curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God has driven thee, and shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God has scattered thee. You know, yesterday when I was waking up, I had this vision, this short vision, where all this week, it was all this week pouring into a vessel. It was just raining all this beautiful week, the grains of wheat were just pouring into this vessel to hold it. When I saw it, it made me think the Lord is gathering his beloved from amongst the nations. He's gathering his wheat into his garner. When we look at verse three, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations, whither the Lord thy God have scattered thee. I just saw a flood of, of wheat grains, just a floodgate of them, and then it dissipated. But what I was left with was that the Lord is gathering his beloved. He is gathering us from amongst the nations, just as his word foretold. And if any of thine be driven out unto the utmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee. And from thence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. And thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. When the Most High restores us, it is going to be a great restoration, beloved. But even now, it's a joy. It's a blessing to know that as we follow the Most High, he is showing us through signs and wonders in the earth that he is coming back for his beloved. And we, beloved, must repent and turn to the Lord with all our hearts and thank him that he did not use the punishment he could have against some of our sins. He was merciful unto us. He has been merciful and gracious. I'm going to go down to chapter, to verse five. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. That's a dream so beautiful. It is so beautiful to think of a day when we're not in this nation. We're not being taught carnal things. We're not surrounded 
by the spirit of Babylon, but we will be in the midst of our own people with the most high. And according to his word, we shall have no need that any man teach us from the least to the greatest. We shall all know the Lord. So there won't be any of that sense of ignorance. There is a blessing coming just knowing it and seeing the signs. We should count our blessings as we go into the Sabbath, beloved. Yes, yes. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And the Lord thy God will pour out all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. We can see the curse in reverse, beloved. We see it. We see it now. We see. And you know what? As we see this thing coming to an end, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. I'm in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 8. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Yes, beloved, we, lay, we wait patiently for our Lord, for Yahuwah to come and redeem Yasharel. But there's going to come a point. We're at the end of this thing. We are at the end, beloved. And right now, counting our blessings of the goodness of the Lord. Praise is comely. It, it's a good looking thing, not only on the outside, but it, it raises something up in you on the inside. Everything we have come from the Lord, everything. Anytime we have heat in the winter, water when we're thirsty, food when we're hungry, we can shut the door and feel safe in our homes and warm in our beds. We have clothes on our backs and clothes to choose from. There's a blessing that explodes before our eyes every day. All praise, all honor, all glory to the Most High that he has given this to us. It is a blessing that we don't neglect the gathering together of ourselves, that we can share words with one another. There is a blessing, beloved, that we have awakened to who we are. There is a blessing, and as we count them, years ago, we would have never had these things before us to share with one another like we do now, to strengthen each other, to encourage each other. It's a blessing and it comes from the most high. Everything we have, beloved, to finish. We're in the book of Numbers, chapter six, verses 24 to 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Beloved, counting our blessings while praising, honoring, and glorifying the Most High. As the sun sets and we are about to begin the Sabbath, and we count our blessings, many of us, we may need to just sit down and write them down, all our blessings. Sometimes when you see it, it will shock you. And suddenly those things that seem so big and so major become so minute and minuscule that we recognize it was simply an attack from the enemy. Counting our blessings. This day, we thank the Most High for all the goodness that he has done, his goodness and mercy. We thank him that according to his word, Yeshua HaMashiach, we have repentance and forgiveness of our sins. And let us repent and turn towards the Lord and thank him for all he is and has done. 
In the mighty name of Yeshua, giving honor to the Ruach Kakadesh. May the Lord bless you and keep you as we share in the Sabbath that is to come. Shalom, beloved. A word.